Hello, I'm Andrew Campbell from Ashridge Business School, and I've got with me Mark Lancelot from PA Consulting. And together, Mark and I run the best, possibly the only, course on operating models in Europe. And we're going to share with you now six tips from the course we run. So tip number one. So tip number one is about stakeholders. It is important, we have found, when whatever bit of organization you're working on, think of the stakeholders that that organization affects. Traditionally, people focus mainly on the customers. What we found is it's important to look beyond customers. Yes, customers are vitally important, and often there are different categories of customer, internal customers and external customers, and so on. But also suppliers, business partners, the people who are there backing up that part of the organization from the outside. They're an important stakeholder and need to be taken into account of as you do the design work. And the important employees, the critical ones who are going to make the difference. Uh, and even those who are providing the money for the, for the operation if it's not coming directly from customers. So take a stakeholder view, tip number one. Mark. So tip two is define design principles. It's like building a house. If you don't tell the architect what you want and give them some guidelines, you're not going to get what you want. So if we were building a house, we might say, we want to have parties for up to 50 people. We want the patio to blend with the garden. We want to be able to have guests to stay, but still have some privacy in kind of how we live. So, so understanding and making some choices that are going to guide how the architect sets out the blueprint is key. Andrew, tip three. Tip number three is about levels of design. And um, what we found is that in any design work, there are four, five, or six levels of design. And it's quite easy to get confused on a project of, of what level of design you're working at. So the concept here is that level one is design principles, just as Mark has been pointing out. Clarity about the few things that are really important. Level two is a rough sketch, a diagram. Um, in the house context, it might be a sketch of the house with the roof outline, um, uh, some, some views from the house from different angles. Um, level, th uh, where have I got to? Le three. Level three is then the kind of operating model level. So in the house, you'd be, it's the level of the blueprint. Here you've got, um, you've laid out the rooms and the, um, and the wiring and the windows, and you've got all the measurements correct. And it kind of, it's ready to hand over to the builder. To level four, first, actually, would be the quantity surveyor, the person who calculates how many planks are needed for the floors, how many tiles are needed for the roofs, how many bricks are needed for the walls, or, you know, what, what volume of glass is needed for the windows. Um, and inside the organization, it's more about you know, how many uh, square foot of space do we need and how many machines do we need in the, in the factory. And level five is when the builder starts work. Because as the builder starts to build a room, often come across problems which weren't foreseen in the design. At that point, some additional design work has to be done. That's also part of design. Mark. So tip four is make sure you're harnessing and exploiting the power of technology. So information is increasingly the lifeblood of organizations, so make sure you can exploit it. Make sure that your information isn't tied up in functional silos or, or different systems. And technology is also opening up new ways of connecting with customers, creating new value propositions or new business models. So make sure you understand how technologies such as mobile, social, big data, cloud and digitization, make sure your operating model is taking advantage of the opportunities that technology offers. Andrew. Yeah, Mark, and I, I think that uh, companies are often way behind on um, the latest technology. Now, of course, you don't always want to be at the bleeding edge of technology, but, but some companies we found are, are um, some way to go. Absolutely. So um, tip, where have we got to five? Tip five is um, financials. Don't forget the financial numbers when you're doing operating model design. This is like you know, forgetting the budget that you have for building the house when you're um, deciding what sort of materials you need. Um, 
you are going to, every bit of work that you do on the operating model is going to have an impact on costs or revenues. And as you're doing that work, you need to think what that impact is. It's very easy to have some good idea, which is going to have some impact on cost, but it's going to have no beneficial impact on revenues. It's not delivering anything extra to the customer. You don't need it in the operating model. Equally, it's very easy to come up with good ideas to give extra value to the customer, but the customer's not prepared to pay for it, or you can't generate some extra revenues. So keeping a good eye, a good eye on the costs and the benefits, the revenues, um, and, and the balance sheet as well is critical while you're doing operating model design. Final tip. The final tip is remember that this is a design process, so you need to be creative. Think about how, how the operating model needs to be different. So in practice, that means kind of creating the, the time and space to reflect on what the challenge is. Introduce some outsider perspectives into, into your process. So what would other organisations in different sectors do? What would customers or suppliers say about us? What would non-customers say about us? Having that time to kind of reflect and, and reframe the problem we believe is critical. Too often, organisations jump to what they know and, or jump to best practice and make incremental improvements. Sometimes that's the right answer, sometimes it's not. So make sure you've got time in your process to look at options and creativity. These are our six tips. These are six of the messages that we focus a good bit of time on during our two-day course, Designing Operating Models at Ashridge Business School. Please come.